Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And we are here at the start of the season looking at the preseason rankings. We're finally getting into some gameplay. The first game of the season coming up next. But first, let's look at some preseason stuff. Uh, let's just see where we're ranked here to start the season. And we're not anywhere near the top 50. Not in the top 60. Not in the top 70. We're going to keep going down here. We're going to be pretty low to start this season out. Man, are we even 110? No, we're not, not even 110. I don't even see 120. We are literally the second to last ranked team in the nation by right in front of texas state i mean that might be that might be the toilet bowl if you think about it i mean the two worst teams pre-ranked preseason ranked at the bottom 125 literally no respect but we have to earn it so let's just look at how i mean obviously we're gonna be at the bottom of our conference prediction wise but let's look at our uh look at the conference so looking at the east appalachian state's going to be in our division troy east carolina georgia state and then as well as texas state texas state is actually in the west but to kind of make it a better uh, a balance of competition i had to do it this way um so navy's going to be in the west we did move navy into the sun belt mainly to get that conference championship we needed two teams added arkansas state's also on this side as well they're actually projected to be the number two team in the conference behind navy so that's interesting so right away we're playing the best team predicted on the west and then louisiana raging cajun middle middle tennessee state south alabama and ulm uh louisiana monroe so that's going to be how our conference is going to look let's just look to see who's on the heisman to start this year so uh it looks like blumrick from texas a&m anima from uh bama as well uh just a couple of guys here um let's just look to see if we got any uh i don't know if they have the uh preseason conference all american or uh preseason all conference let's just look at that let's just look to see if we have any uh preseason all conference guys so it looks like we do not have any on the first team so far nobody on the first team oh we do have our punter <laughs> they're predicting our punter to be a first team all conference let's see second team let's see if we have any second teamers i mean we're pretty bad if we're ranked second to last in the nation look at that we only have one guy on the preseason uh all conference team and it's our punter i mean how pathetic is that so let's just look at you know a couple of key players on navy let's just look at that real quick so starting out on offense their quarterback zach abby and you look at him i mean he doesn't have great throwing attributes but look at that acceleration 92 and 92 agility meaning he's probably gonna avoid a lot of tackles at the quarterback position he's the top guy at quarterback so they're gonna be running probably a ton of option and let's look at their running back daryl bonner so look at this 97 acceleration 83 speed i mean he's gonna be a monster he doesn't break a lot of tackles probably but he's probably gonna be a guy that's elusive is just gonna slip out of uh through blocks and through holes and we'll see man it's gonna be tough to stop him let's just look to see who they have the ball to throw to brandon cologne it looks like he's 91 acceleration 81 acceleration or 81 awareness 85 speed so he might be creating some separation versus norman we'll have to watch that matchup but let's look at their middle linebacker here micah thomas so he's an 88 overall guy he's their senior their heart and soul on their defense so we're gonna have to look out for him and throwing the ball let's look at to see if they have any good corners so tyrus wooten 79 overall but look everybody on their team has high acceleration what are they doing at navy i mean to get this high of acceleration 95 excel 95 agility these guys can move so this is gonna be a tough matchup man i mean it's gonna be real tough so let's hop into this action man let's get it season opener here we go the first game in coastal carolina history at the fbs level being bow eligible so let's get it let's go so navy has that high powered offense you know they're gonna run that triple option so you know this is gonna be a tough game and i looked at the overalls actually before this game started and we're rated 45 and they're all they're like 82 83 they're almost double the amount of overall that we are so 
on the first play of the game. Let's hop into this action. Zach Abbey throwing the ball away, but on a second and 10, giving it to us full back high and high straight trucks. A defender on his way to a big gain, 30 yards on that one. Cedric Granger took a beating on that one, missing the tackle, but here he is making up. He does get the tackle on this one. Uh, by Garguilo up the middle. So now Zach Abbey on a first and 10, now past the 50 yard line, breaking the tackle and pitching it to Perry and Perry is going to run in for the touchdown. And what's funny about that is that these guys are hard to bring down. I mean, these are some strong guys. They can all run the ball and they kind of give us a dose of everything. Uh, Abbey pretty much can throw the ball and he can run the ball but then they have a power back they have a full back they have a fast running back I mean it's so many weapons for us to stop on defense so it's gonna be a long day for us so now back on our offense here is Marcus Milam leading this team out and somehow fumbles the ball that time and it stays out of bounds so now on a third and three here is Marcus Milam completing his first pass of his career here to Mason win the senior for a 12 yard reception. So now we're gonna try to get this running game going. We give it to Yates up the middle for a nice five yard gain. And on a second and five, running a jet sweep fake. And this time we see a wide open, but the Navy defense gets to us, swallows us up. So we're now faced with a third and 18, an unlikely scenario here, but we do convert as Sam Forbes in the slot gets open we saw this a lot in the spring game he just has the ability to get open so now on a first and 10 once again Cameron Yates is open so two first downs here two big ones on this first drive so now facing a second and 11 trying to throw a middle screen to Mason win but not enough room to wiggle that time so on a third and eight out of the shotgun throwing over the middle finding Paco Ashton and he's getting across the first down marker for a first down. So now we're inside the red zone, facing a third and 10 this time. Milam is gonna roll out right. Oh, he should have picked up that block, but does not. The defender runs him down and Marcus Milam is down. But luckily it's third down, he does get a breather. It turns out that it was minor and he'll be back in the game. So it's now a seven to three game and they're just gonna keep running this triple option. I mean. They can see that our defensive line is pretty weak up front. And here is Zach Abbey here on a second and four. They decide to switch it up a little bit, scrambling for nine yards. So now on a first and 10, two minutes left in this first quarter. Here is High getting the ball once again. And he gets the handoff and gets to the outside, almost breaks that one. So here is High once again. And this time, perfect blocking. Everybody is pancaked. And Chris High runs in for the touchdown. But I have no idea what Cedric Granger was doing. He Bruh. had a lane to get to High, but he must have lost track of the ball. And he allows High to run all the way for the touchdown. So now it's 14-3, to and already it's getting ugly. The pass rush is getting in. So on a third and 10, play fake this time. Throw onto the outside, and Marcus Milam overthrows Amari Manuel on the outside. So we are forced to punt the ball away and they have high on their side high is just killing I don't, he just jumped and juked a defender look at this once again he jumped and it juked a defender i don't know how that happens but somehow high is doing all this i mean on these simple carries these are just carries up the middle of this triple option is just impossible to stop but we finally do get bonner tackled in the backfield that time by Cedric Granger we were sending the, the blitz that time so on a third and eight under center with a chance to stop him but a perfect throw over the top of the safety to Craig Scott by Zach Abbey is completed for his first completion of the game but this one's gonna go for a touchdown so it is 21 to 3 here in the second quarter and we are just not getting anything going on offense as uh, Kuzo does get stopped on that one. So now on a third and five, rolling out right is Milam, and he gets swallowed by the defender. Somehow trips him up. Justin Norton, take another look at this again. I don't know how he tripped him up. He barely got a grasp of his leg that time, and we had to punt again. So here is Chris High one more time Bruh. on the first play. After the punt, and he gets a handoff up the middle, breaks another one, and he's stumbling inside the 
yard line. This guy cannot be brought down as he gets another carry. And this one gets in for six. So it is ugly right now. 28 to 3. No offense to speak of in this game for the Coastal Carolina Shauna Clears. As we just need to complete some short passes, maybe get Milam's confidence going. And Sam Forbes showing that he can run after the catch, breaking a tackle. And he's close to a, almost 50 yards receiving already. So now three minutes left in the second quarter. Here is Milam rolling out once again. Doesn't get caught up that time. He gets out for a nice six-yard run. So now on a second and two from the shotgun, throwing to the outside, finding Sam Forbes. Sam Forbes showing that he can play on the outside as well. So now we are past the 50-yard line, third and 10 this time, throwing to Sam Forbes, and he cannot get the first down so we're now faced with a fourth and three try and we have to go for it we're down by four scores pretty much and here is Milam trying to run the exact same play but takes a shot on the throw and he's down once again and I could anticipate seeing this a lot during the season gotcha, he might bitch. get hit quite a bit and it's gonna we're gonna need to do, rely on our backup quarterbacks because our pass, our passing, blocking, run blocking, all that isn't so great. So all these teams are going to get in for these big Bruh. plays. And speaking of big play, Brandon Cologne gets open, somehow catches the ball, breaks a tackle, avoids a tackler at Bruh. the same time, and breaks it for the long gain. So this is sad. I mean, we are down 35-3 to in the first half. And we are just trying to get something going. We cannot complete that pass that time. So now on a second and 10, this time Sam Forbes is getting open. And he's actually closing on a pretty big day in the first half receiving-wise. So now facing a first and 10, good play by the defense that time, deflecting the pass on the outside. So now facing a second and 10, this time the pass rush getting there. But we do get it away to C.J. Goodwin close to the 50-yard line, so trying to get some points on the board here. 40 seconds left in this half, and on a third and nine, trying to throw the ball down the field, but doesn't get his feet set as Marcus Milam. He throws a short pass that time, so now on a fourth and nine, attempting to go for it once again, finding Kuzo, but Kuzo gets stopped right before the marker, and that is going to be a turnover, so they have 30 seconds left here in the half, so we had to stop them because... I mean, they're, they've been scoring within like a minute. So on the first play, throwing it to Cologne Bruh. is Zach Abbey. And look at this. Cologne breaks the tackle from Preston Mays and pretty much gets ahead of steam forward. And he's not going to be touched. Take another look at this. I mean, straight runs him over and then runs all the way for the touchdown. So now we come out into the second half. And we have no choice. I mean, we need, we need to do some talent evaluation, see what's going wrong in this game. So we decided to bring in Wesley David to see, will that make a difference? Will a change at quarterback make a difference? We'll see. But here he is completing his first pass here to Sam Forbes in the slot. So now on a first and 10, back-to-back -back plays. Nice throw that time to Amari Manuel on the outside for a nice 20-yard gain. So now on a first and 10 running, uh, Mason went in motion. This time he has a tight end. Saquon open, but he cannot find him. That was a wide open guy. We got to make those throws, especially in games like this where we need to find an identity and another missed opportunity wide open. So we do go for it on a fourth down. Running win in motion. Once again, another open guy in Wesley David. Three straight wide open guys he misses and we have to turn the ball over on downs and give the ball back to high as he gets a carry this time getting up the middle getting up the field and he just display he's just displaying that power and it's hard to bring him down and ryan marshall had an opportunity to bring him down the backfield on a third down and couldn't do it so now they give the ball to garguilo who gets in and he gets a seven yard gain so now here goes here comes Garguilo once again, and he's getting past the 15-yard line. So they're moving the ball at ease, no different than the first half. And here is Abby coming under center one more time on an option, pitches it to Bonner, and nice tackle that time by Preston Mays on the outside. So we get him down to a third and six here. 
and we could get a little small win if we get in for the sack and that's exactly what we're gonna do as nice pressure that time from our defensive line as Jalen Joe gets in for the sack and with the help of Billups up front and also some other guys so now here we go back on offense can we put some points up on the board I mean we need to get a touchdown here and with Wesley David at quarterback, he did some great things in the spring game. But here he is giving it to Cameron Yates on the swing pass. And Cameron Yates puts on a good move. So a nice 15-yard gain. I like to see that. I thought Kuzo was actually going to be uh, more of a factor in the passing game. But Cameron Yates showing that he can catch a little bit. So here is Sam Forbes. And he seems to be the only one on offense really being a cons consistent point for us. And... A guy that can move the ball as Wesley David severely underthrows the drag route. So we do go for it on a, on a fourth down. Giving it to Cameron Yates. And Cameron Yates gets swallowed up. Look at all of those blockers we had in on that play. And somehow the Navy safety gets in for the tackle. So on to the fourth quarter. And here is Chris High for one more time. I mean, this guy cannot be stopped i mean no matter what we're throwing we're throwing goal line at them we're throwing blitzes all out blitzes you can see our some of our plays are pretty much all out blitzes just trying to stop this run and we just can't do it so here in the fourth quarter we decide to bring in emilio garcia in garbage time just to see you know did we miss something in the spring game did he just have an off game but here you can see he's had two incompletions and here's a third here on his third pass and that one's going to be deflected by the Navy safety. So now on a first and 10, we do have to punt the ball away to Navy once again. And they keep just giving it to Chris High. Chris High is just getting every carry. And here on a third and four, they do throw the ball. And, man, you would think, you know, you're up 52-3. to three. You would think they would run the ball, but nope. They're passing the ball, and they have no cares in the world as they give it off to Chris High one more time. And... I mean, just so many yards on the ground for this Navy offense. But we do get a break this time. A broken play allows Jalen Joe to get in one more time. And Jalen Joe's actually uh, lined up as the second uh, D end on the depth chart. And he's actually made some pretty good plays in this game. I like what I see from him. But, man, I mean, just all around our defense is struggling. Giving up 52 points in a game is just horrible as Chris High does run it in for another touchdown here with four minutes left in the fourth and that one is going to do it as they go on to actually score another touchdown and they win this game 66 to 3 and I mean just nothing went right I mean the only thing if I had to point out one thing that went right in this game it was Sam Forbes in the slot he had 94 yards 42 yards after the catch no drops by our receivers as well none so I mean when they got the pass they were holding on to the ball but I mean our defense just gave up 66 points I mean we need to address something I don't think I'm gonna run the 3-4 and the reason why is because we cannot stop the run I mean we need four down linemen so we're gonna probably switch to a 4-3 multiple get a lot of different guys on the field as you can see everybody pretty much it was pretty equal everybody had a pretty good equal tackling game but I think Jalen Joe stuck out the most on our defensive line and I mean Cedric Granger made some pretty good plays during the game but then he made some pretty questionable ones as well so that's a guy that we're going to look forward to being our leader in the future so we're going to need all of our guys to step up but hit subscribe hit that like button because this might be a long season but it's going to be fun so stay tuned let's get it and let's go